All right, and we're live. What's up, my brothers? And I'm joined by my brother with the same last name from down under. What's up, Sterling? I am having a fantastic day, Rich. Good to see you again. Good to be back on the channel yeah. again. Yeah, we had fun yesterday on the Rule Zero Live. Um, do, you, do you, by the way, know what Coopers do? Because you, because you do have to have this right. I know that that you just added the last name, you know, for stage purposes. But yeah. I do know it's uh, it's it's uh, something to do with being a barrel maker. It is, yeah. They, they uh, the Coopers were actually Cooperages, you know, back in the day, and they would uh, manufacture barrels. Yeah. There you go. Um, all right. So today's show, I got a request, and I normally just kind of put these up on Screencast-O-Matic. Some guys will be like, "Well, you know, what do you use to record?" It's Screencast-O-Matic. You can just pay a, a monthly subscription, and it lets you basically just read and record stuff on your screen. But I figured this one's on an area that I that I don't have d direct experience with because it's about having a small penis. But um, apparently there's things that you can do to improve that. So I know Sterling wrote the book on how he increased his penis size for adult film work. Um, so I figure, you know, I'm going to read this one. We'll, you know, we'll kind of dive into it. I got some stats over here that, you know, I think might be useful to some of these guys. I know there's going to be guys out there watching this because as I look at the world charts, there's a lot of places in the world where um, they're not genetically gifted, let's just say. I was lucky. My dad was six foot four, so I got, I got the height and everything that comes along with that. Um, let's let's start by reading it, okay? Yeah, let's uh, do it. Let me grab this, and we'll throw it up on the screen, add the stream. I just want to make sure I don't show his email address or anything. Give me a second before I pull this up. Okay, and add the stream. All right, so I'll just read this because it's a little bit small. So he says, uh, how to play the game with a small penis. Th this this cast is already demonetized. I know YouTube will never send a, a, an ad on this at all. So whatever, we're just going to dive straight down on this one. Um, he says, I'm 23 years old, have a small PP. Flaccid looks like a pinky, and it's 4.7 inches long, erect, and four girth. I'm assuming that means four inches girth or centimeters. That's, uh, yeah, that'd be, that'd be his circumference. Uh, it's got to be circumference is around the outside right yeah he actually went to the extent of measuring it with a flexible tape measure because that's yeah it's got to be circumference okay uh i know there is no way to enlarge it first of all we're going to say wrong um i suffer from premature ejaculation as well oh you can deal with that we'll, we'll talk about that too mm -hmm. uh, i've had tons of problems with this since high school all kinds of rejection humiliation from women and men bullying being cheated on it's not about confidence luckily i'm tall Fitness, have a good job reading a read a freaking lot. I read all from Robert Greene, Ryan Holiday, Rollo Tomasi, Neil Strauss, Jack Donovan, your book. Well, good choices. Uh, I know I can compensate with fingers, tongue, toys, but men with normal big sizes use that too. I've done tons of research on how to pleasure women. I perfectly know my limitations. Big turn off, can't give cervix orgasms. They reject one night stands, casual sex to guys lacking there. I feel like a lesbian. Man, okay. Um, I'm already starting to get depressed reading this, bro. <laughs> there's gonna be a, there's gonna be a lot of things to talk about here. All right. Um, is there anything that you want to hit on before we carry on? Because there's a bit well, more to go. This, this is a this is an essay. Uh, so first of all, you guys will notice, like, at the very his first paragraph, he ends up saying it's not about confidence, and then the second paragraph, he's like, I feel like a lesbian, and women won't have one night stands with me because I have a tiny penis. Here's the there's a there's a fallacy there. Like they don't know the size of your penis until you've put it in them, like until you're having the one night stand. They don't know the length of your dick, unless like and and he, you know he did say he's got he said rejection from most stuff. Unless it's get, gotten to the point where he's pulled his pants down and they've just run out the room, which I highly doubt has ever happened. Mm -hmm. Then he's already kind of mind fucking himself. Yeah. yeah, he's already starting at a disadvantage. I mean, this is what most guys will do is they'll just like sulk over something they feel and, they, and they'll make a mountain out of a molehill. I mean, we'll talk about some useful tips in a minute, but let's, yeah, let's exactly. keep going here. Um, There's also one, one other real quick thing I wanted to mention here. Yeah. He said, he, looks, he says like men with normal sized penises can use, you know, fingers and tongues and toys and stuff. Here's yeah. the thing. Here's the thing I'll say right away is that most men aren't as creative in the bedroom as you might think. Most men just do the same shit over yeah. and over. Again. They they just they they stick to their routine, you know. Especially if they're genetically gifted. I mean, they're not going to make much of an effort. One thing I have heard women say over the years, over and over again, is um, you know, whenever they've been with a small guy, they always say, "Well, he better either have a lot of money 
or be really good with foreplay. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the thing. Like, it's a, sex is a learnable skill, guys, and it's something you can easily like learning how to use. Like, for guys who who have a tiny penis, first of all, yes, there are ways you can increase it. We'll go into that later. But second of all, like, while you're increasing it, because it doesn't happen overnight, while you're increasing it, there are there are two things that every man has that are basically uh, replacements for a tiny penis, and that's this thing right here. Like, I'm not talking about this. I'm not talking about that thing. I'm talking about this thing. Like, the fist is a very versatile tool, guys. And dudes who have, like you said, who are, who are blessed genetically downstairs, neglect it because they don't need to use it. But if you're a guy who can, who isn't, say, genetically blessed, then that is a very handy tool you can use to absolutely rock a girl's world. Yeah, we'll so, talk about that a little bit more, too. Um, okay, let me keep going here. So he says, uh, okay, there are women with tiny peas. I'm going to try to water this down because there's some language in here that could cause more problems for me. So there are women with tiny, you know, the jizzles, uh, who could feel it or who truly won't care, but are incredibly hard to find, which reduce a lot of my options, making it really hard to spin plates. Uh, the problem is that I can definitely be alpha with that bad, sorry, is I... Can't definitely be alpha with that bad genetics. I can't play the game. I believe it, that in most cases will only be with me for money, cheat on me, sex will be bad. I feel like, yeah, this guy's already down on himself from the get-go. I mean, it's really hard to start from this point. Um, I feel like at that least- paragraph right there. Must. What's that? That paragraph right there, that whole first sentence is what we would call a limiting belief. Yeah. Um, yeah, he's already starting this from a position of I'm going to lose at life just you know, just with the cards that have been dealt. But um, anyway, we'll we'll- We'll make sure we give you guys lots of value on this one. I don't want to be the stupid beta bucks nor be forced to engage in LTR to have sex opportunities. I dream of hot women and, that truly desire me and just want to play a game like a normal guy. Uh, I thought of uh, taking permanent steps to a temporary problem. You guys can read that. I'm not going to read that out loud because it's problems for uh, YouTube. Uh, also, in living a solo life and uh, playing with the pom-pom twins, which is what he's doing. I'm not going to read that out either. Uh, and in having sex with only prostitutes. Okay, well, uh, but wanting to hear you first, I know I must become more confident. Yes, definitely. Uh, change how I see things, but I already read a lot of books on the topic. Makes me feel... I don't think he's read the right books on the topic no. if he's if he started from this position because there's a lot you can do. Uh, makes me feel better at the end of the day, but isn't about feelings. Yeah, okay, well, you know how I always say guys have to complicate their lives and then justify why they do it? This is like a classic case of it, right? Mm. Uh, I want to quote this from the rational male. As much as women will assert that a man's penis size is irrelevant to their sexual pleasure, often the first insult they'll hurl at a man in order to shame him is, I bet he's got a small dick. Now, he's added that to it. Size matters is what he's added. But the, like, you're, you're taking this out of context. I mean, what you're doing is what the classic black pill trope is, which is sulk on one idea. They'll, they'll, they'll extract a soundbite. They'll repackage it and then send it back out there you know to the universe to uh basically justify why they've complicated their life the point that rollo is making with that when he says as much as a woman will assert that a man's penis size is irrelevant to the sexual pleasure often the first insult they hurl at a man in order to shame him is i bet he's got a small i've had lots of women that have hurled insults at me over the years especially since i've been on youtube and twitter and if i post something that's like you know ladies here's six things that you need to do to keep your man and it blows up on the internet you know you look through the comments and right away it's like oh, i bet you got a small dick or you don't know how to please a woman or some nonsense like oh, that geez. that's just the standard response mechanism right well it's the standard response to from women whose only agency is the vagina is when when they start to understand that their only agency is there is their ability to please a man sexually? That's when they start to result. Exactly when they when they when when a, when a woman doesn't have anything else to offer, yeah. and she subconsciously knows that this is the kind of language she uses. Yeah. So let's finish this one here because because he, he's got a little bit of a follow up to it with some more that I'm not going to show on the screen because he doesn't want me to show it. Um, but I will read some of the details. Um, I don't want to have a woman accept me. I, I don't plan to appeal reason, emotions, belief, try to convince women as, as it kills desires. Hypergamy doesn't care. Again, you know, you're like you're doing, you're starting to lean into the classic. Um, you know, I've taken the red pill. Now that I've seen the code in the matrix, it's hopeless. There's nothing I can do. You know, hypergamy doesn't care. Yeah, hypergamy doesn't care. Okay. But there's things that you can do. I want to be like you. He said, okay, 
Oh, you're my idol. Uh, so, so try to put yourself in my shoes and tell me the truth. What would you do knowing everything that you know and if you're born again with a small PP and pre-ejaculation to win the game with women? All right, let's remove this from the screen because there was a follow-up to this with some more um, that is relevant because let's just let's just get all into all of this. Um, where's the second part here? 23. Okay, so there's 23. Okay, so I'm not going to show this on the screen, but this is a, a follow-up to that. Uh, because I just let him know, you know, it's it's super busy around the holidays. It's gonna take me a couple weeks to record this. Um certainly so apologize, blah, blah, blah. So he came from a single mother household, very toxic mom, every red flag that affected me a lot, understanding the world in a bad way. Thanks uh to the reading, I'm improving. Also, she has a strong Strong religious useless beliefs. Yeah. Okay. Well, at least he's recognized that, you know, the information he's getting from mom is pretty much useless to him and life at this point. Uh, planning to move ASAP once I have the money. So that tells me he's living at home. Right. Um, 23 years old, living at home with your single mommy is probably the worst thing you can be doing right now. Get the hell out of that house as quickly as possible. Um, Forgot to send. Okay, so I've seen his um, social links. Again, I never share these on the screen to keep my requester anonymous. Um, I'm just going to geo-target a certain part of the world. It looks like Central uh, to South America. Um, uh, da, 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 da. It looks like your typical kind of guy that would be in, you know, like an IT sort of computer job. Uh, right now in the process of reinventing myself, tons of work to improve looks, money, status, game, atheist. Yeah, he says I'm a soft, I'm in software. Yep. Um, how, how old is he? Do we know? 23. Okay. Uh, and more than fear and rejection, I feel like I'm just losing my time trying to pursue something that's impossible to reach a goal I feel I'm not capable of because genetics due to my bad experiences and the stories I read online from people. See, when you spend too much time online looking for, like, I always tell people, you know, women included, if you go looking for dirt, you're going to find it. You know, if you yeah. go digging for shit, you're going to find it. It will come your way. You know, you can call it the law of attraction or whatever you want. But if you go looking for reasons to feel miserable about your life circumstances, you will find it. I mean, I could I could literally sit around on the Internet all day and read about how guys with scars on their bodies are impossible to find women. OK, but I don't spend any time doing any of that nonsense because I don't give a F. You know, I just. Yeah, I he's, he's, he's like. He spent a lot of time online searching for justifications for right. his limited belief. Complicate life, justify why you do it. Um, some people are online, same boat. He's talked about taking, again, permanent solutions to temporary problem. I also read about balding and height in your book, but I think if you have a small P, different, those examples, blah, 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 totally destroyed these two issues, premature ejaculation. Um, now, he's saying the type of women in beauty terms I would love to go after are Victoria's Secret models. So, yes, it, and he even knows, you know, this is ridiculous and stupid for him to have these goals and expectations. Um, I will say this. I, I I ran across this guy once, and I think I mentioned this in a video at one point. It might even be, be pinned in my, um, I'm going to throw this back on. I'm cold. It's freaking winter here. But, um, you know, I ran into this guy that used to own three uh, eight-story buildings um, you know, when I was working in the credit and collection world and he was a little dude and he used to keep his exotic cars in the underground parking lot. He looked like Danny DeVito. You know, the guy was like five foot five, bad, you know, like holding on to scraps, balding, uh, wasn't good looking at all, probably like a three out of 10. But every time I saw him down in the underground, you know, picking up one of his cars, he was always with a young, hot, like supermodel looking chick. Okay. Was he packing 10 inches? I don't know. Probably not based on his height, but he had bank. That's the thing, guys. Right. Like, there's, you can, this is, it comes down to like a, like a worldview, like shift, because there's, you can find plenty of examples in the world of dudes who are short, bowling, ugly, tiny dicks, pulling supermodels. Like, you can find them if you want to find them. These are, there are endless examples of this in the real world. This is not fantasy land. And we're not even talking like celebrities. We're just talking guys who've done well in life. You know, guys who've put in the effort to yeah. level up. You know, and obviously this guy's 20, like, okay, at 23, you're very unlikely to be able to pull a supermodel. Okay, because who are, who are supermodels dating? Supermodels are dating like really top tier dudes with, with like status and money, et cetera. Okay, cool. Yeah. 
well, that, then you know where your goal is at least. So you've, you've, you've identified where you want to be. That's a good first step. Yeah. The second step is removing this limiting belief and this frame of reference on the world that you currently have, which is not helping you in any way, shape, or form. This idea that you're limited your genetics, that you have no way to change this at all. It's a complete lie. Mm -hmm. um, let's take a look at some stats here because I kind of dug these up. Uh, countries with the largest erect penis length around the world. Is this is 10, one, two, this looks like the top 10. So Ecuador, which is in Latin America, apparently if you're from Ecuador, your average length is just under seven inches, 6.93. Uh, all the way down to some of the African countries. Netherlands is up at the top. There's a lot of tall guys in the Netherlands. You know, men and women are, Dutch men and women are very tall, in fact. So there is a correlation between height. Um, and then the smallest erect penis lengths um, down to 3.95. So this guy's saying he's 4.7. So moved, moved to Cambodia would be a good, <laughs> a good recommendation because you're actually bigger than most guys in Cambodia because the average length there is 3.9 erect. Uh, Burma, Taiwan, Philippines, Sri Lanka, Hong Kong, Bangladesh, Thailand, Vietnam, and Malaysia, which goes to 4.52. So he's saying he's 4.7. So in any one of these countries, he's he's packing a hog compared <laughs> to the local population. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Unfortunately, it looks like he's in um, Central Latin, and Ecuador is the 6.93 capital of the world. So if he lives in Ecuador, he's 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 going to have a tough time, obviously. So there's some geolocation stuff that you can do. Yeah. Um, this is country population, and there's a chart you can download, which I'm not going to get into. Is there any more here? Um, international penis sizes compared. Where does this take you? Average size by country worldwide. Again, so they put Ecuador, Cameroon, Bolivia up near the top, and all the way down in the bottom is Cambodia, Burma, Taiwan. There's a correlation apparently based on height. So they're saying in some countries as a percentage of your height, it can be as much as 10% of your height, hmm. your tool. Whereas in some of the countries where you've got less genetically gifts, you're at six and change, 6% 6 of your height. So, and that seems to be pretty consistent in the smaller countries along with the larger ones too. So that's interesting. Um, data sources, blah, blah, blah. Okay. That's uh, let me see if there was anything else there that I wanted to throw up on the screen. Origin, data sources, manhood on a tree. There's lots that you could go Googling on this one size. Okay. Um, so solutions to this, Sterling. Yeah. Uh, adult film star extraordinaire yeah. has a notch count of over 100. How many How many no, shots? Have, like, have a notch count significantly higher than that, Rich. 500, 1,000. What is it? <laughs> uh, it's over 500. Over, over 500. So... You know, coming from a guy that that basically makes his living uh, going to pound town, what is your what is your recommendation for guys dealing with a smaller Johnson? I mean, I want you to go first because you're the expert here. Cool. All right. So there's a couple of things here, right? Uh, actually, I'll, I'll, I want to touch on three points. First one is his mental frame of right, of, of reference here is like that. I'm this is not a problem I can solve. Therefore, I'm doomed forever. Real. I'm here to tell you right now. This is something you can actually change. Is you can physically change the length and the girth of your penis. Okay, so relax. You're not doomed. If you don't believe me, I have proof of it on the internet. You can go to sterlingtuber.com forward slash proof. It's not safe for work, so don't do it in a library. Don't do it. You know, <laughs> in the room. Sterlingcooper.com forward slash proof. Forward slash proof. Okay, so you guys can go look at that later. I'm not going to put it up on the screen. I'm not put it up on the screen. Don't link to it <laughs> in the chat or anything. Yeah. But that that's that's my proof picks of my before and my afters. So you guys can actually see that this has been done. What is the what is the difference in size that you were that that you managed to grow your tool by? So it took me eight months to grow. I think it's it was 1.2 inches in length over, over the course of eight months. Okay, in length and in about a third of an inch in circumference addition on the girth. Okay. And what was your starting point in length? Uh, about 5.9. Okay. So 5.9, you added about 1.2 inches? Yeah. Okay. That's, that's, that's pretty significant. Exactly, right? I mean, and that's like I got into adult entertainment under, like, under average for like, you know, a white Caucasian dude. Was that something that you were like self-conscious about? You're like, I really want to do adult films, but I feel like, you know, I need a bigger tool for camera. 
Yeah, basically that was it. Like, so I was already good in bed. Like I was, and this is the thing, this is the second thing I wanted to touch on with this guy is like, okay, like, but I'll answer your question first. So I was, I knew I was already good in bed. I knew I could, you know, keep it going, so to speak. So I knew I could do the job on camera. Then I got my first gig or two and I was like, I, I saw the photos and I was like, ah, damn, I'm not as long as I should be because it's a bit hard to see this stuff on camera. So I'm like, that gave me like the impetus to like put the effort in consistently every day for eight months until I got to a point where it was far more visually appealing on camera and it made my job a little easier. Mm. It was a lot more, it's easier to like open up and stuff. So there was a lot of pressure. Like it was good pressure. It's what we call eustress, not de-stress, but eustress where it's like a positive, stressful uh, influence on your life to force you to you know, the, the work that needs to be done. Uh, but, so if you're a guy who has a small appendage, first of all, you can do something about it. Second of all, it takes time. It takes consistent effort, but it is worth it. Putting in the effort and the time, because especially if you are currently associating, you know, your sense of confidence, especially your sense of confidence in the bedroom around like the size of your appendage, when you increase it, naturally that confidence is going to skyrocket because you're a totally different man, right? He also touched on things like premature ejaculation. So we can, I'll, I'll, once I get through these couple of points, I'm going to start giving this guy some tips on growing stuff and then on the premature ejaculation stuff because that's also very important. But the third thing I want to talk about is sex is a learnable skill, right? Being good in bed is a skill. It is something that requires experience and know-how. Like guys who have you know low notch counts or you know haven't had that much sex in their life they don't have the prerequisite experience that someone like me has, for example, who knows all the different buttons to push on a woman, who's had lots of reference experience, who's seen patterns again and again in terms of what turns women on, what doesn't turn women on, what compliant body language looks like in the bedroom, what non-compliant body language looks like in the bedroom. So I know I can do certain things to a woman if she does this, if she does X, if she does Y, I know what to do and where to do it. So that is also something that he can learn, which puts him far above the competition because he's, he's sort of going in his mind. He's like, oh, just because I have a tiny dick, no woman will ever find me compelling in the bedroom. And it's a complete lie. I can guarantee you out there somewhere, there is an MMA fighter with a tiny appendage who is absolutely rocking his wife's world every night in the bedroom because he can go like he can throw around and do a whole bunch of really dominant things in the bedroom to her. And when you're a guy who knows how to do that, it separates you from the pack. So he's worrying about girls, like not wanting to have one night stands with them and not being able to keep them in rotation. And he's worried about being, not being able to spin plates and being taken advantage of, you know, financially and long-term relationships. Well, when you can do stuff that no other guy can, then bam, like spinning plates is easy. It's like a rotating door. They just come in and out. It's not a problem. Mm. Uh, so where should we start, Rich? Should I, should I start with uh, the PP yeah. stuff? Yeah, let's deal with the tool <laughs> size and and how guys can grow it. Like I know that you've got some 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 serious like tools of the trade that you have in a, a course, which I'll link to later. But give them some ideas. I mean, I've got some experience, um, you know, as well with things like um, you know the Rocket and the Hydromax and all that sort of stuff like that. Yep. So fill them in. Yeah, exactly. So like I said, there's a, there's a bunch of stuff in my book about this, but let's give you some free tools you can use right now. So totally, totally free. It's not going to cost you anything. Uh, the, 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 well, let's, there's a couple of tools here. Let's start with jelking. So jelking is... How do you spell that just so they can look it up if they want? J-E-L-Q. 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 Okay. So gel king is a technique, is a manual technique you can do. It, you, you have to sort of see videos and, and diagrams of it done to understand how to do it properly. Uh, kind of hard for me to sort of show that on camera without Rich getting banned. But it's a process, like a massage you do on your junk that forces blood through your shaft and forces the, 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 the shaft to sort of expand and doing that consistently for increased reps, increased time and attention over a long enough period of time, you will start to get and expand the shaft. So with this guy, they're, they're actually another interesting thing I need to mention here is that when you talk to women about penis size, what you'll notice, and I've seen this time and time again, because you know, 
the girls in my industry talk about this a lot. Whenever it refers to a big penis, they always refer they're referring to the girth, not the length. Guys, when they hear when when guys talk about having a big wang, they're talking about the length. But when women talk about it, they're actually talking about the girth because that's what they mm. feel. Because that they want that sensation of being filled up, right? So the beautiful thing with the jelking exercise is that you can you can tailor it to work lengthwise or girthwise, depending upon the amount of blood that is already in your shaft. So you can have typically like if you go say say at a full erection, you're at like a hundred percent blood f- flow in your penis, right? If you want to work on lengthening the shaft, then you should start jelking it around about like 30 to 40% blood flow. If you want to work on the girth, however, you can go about the range of about 60 to 70, 80% blood flow, and then you're going to start focusing more on increasing the girth of the actual shaft. So you can actually quite easily tailor your, your jelking exercises depending upon your specific goals. And obviously is there you can, like a, is there like a best time of day to do this? Like when you're in the shower, when you're done having sex, you know, when you're masturbating, like yeah. I wouldn't do it pre, but don't do it before sex. Cause you'll sort of wear out your junk and you'll wear you you you're, you're sort of causing my, remember you're causing micro tears basically mm-hmm. in the, the, the blood vessels and the cells of the penile shaft. So it's just like, you know, if you're going not that different, not that dissimilar to if you're, you know, doing a bicep curl, or if I'm doing a tricep tricep extension in the gym and then I go play basketball, my jump shot's going to be off, right? Yeah. So it's immediately afterward, you want to give it some time to sort of refresh and, and heal up. Got it. So I like to do it first thing in the morning, get it out of the way. Then it's that's sort of my morning routine. Part of my morning routine involves a bunch of these exercises and things I talk about in my book. So then bang, it's done. My shaft can rest for the day. And then if I have a lady friend over that night, then I'm good to go. Mm-hmm. So I've got my... my my appendage has the day to relax. And, okay, and- so tip number one: learn what jelking is. There's, there's, there's probably lots of stuff on the internet that explains the movement because it's not, it's not new. It's not like Sterling invented this. I mean, you should be able to find this stuff for free. I know that you've got all the details in your course and in your book as well. And you know, while we're talking about it, let me just drop it for you guys there. It's like an, it's like I, think, I believe it came from the Middle East actually. It's like a really <laughs> yeah, it's a Middle Eastern technique. I mean, it's nothing more than a muscle. Like, you know, they call it a boner, but there's no bones in there. It's just, it's just straight up, you know, like muscle tissue, basically. Yeah. So this is all right. So, so we got so, jelking. So what's next? The first thing you could, so the first thing you could do, you could do a jelking. The second free exercise I'm going to give you guys right now is actually manual stretching. So, uh, this is a technique that was there's a there's a old uh, um, what are they called? Like a not Broadway show, but a stage show called Puppetry of the Penis. Oh yeah, and, and these guys do all kind of funny like tricks with their with their wang, and they make the wristwatch, and they make the make it look like an Eiffel Tower, and all kinds of funny stuff. They actually have weights that you can hang off your. So those guys, right? those guys, to do to to get it flexible enough for them to do their show, mm-hmm. you can do this without weights. You can do this just by manually stretching it. So mm-hmm. basically, if you where's my hand, so that's so basically what you want to do. Let's pretend this microphone is my wang for a second. If, uh, can you still hear me? Yes, excellent. If this is, say, the front part here is, say, like the glands of your of your shaft, you can grip like this, and then you can start to pull. So you're gripping behind the base of the glands. You don't, the, the important thing is the glands is like really the most sensitive part of your dick, so you don't want to be like doing any stretching. You don't want to be breaking anything, you're saying. You don't want to be doing anything nasty there. <laughs> but you can grip behind it, then you can pull in various directions right and you can pull and you can hold at tension and what you're doing with this is you're you're stretching the ligaments that attach your shaft to your pubic bone and that uh, that causes it to hang basically further away from your body and mm-hmm. increases your total erect length can you time. talk about that penis extension surgery that's been going yeah. around a lot because i've seen you tweet about it how it doesn't really do anything it doesn't do crap uh, so explain would, that because I don't want guys going out and paying ten thousand dollars thinking that they're going to extend the size of their dick and get yes, yeah, I'm glad you asked that. Um, yeah, so with with penis enlargement surgery, what they do, so you have your you have your shaft, and then there's ligaments which attach it to the pubic bone, right? So in the enlargement surgery, what they do is they just sever 
the ligaments that attach it to your pubic bone instead of, instead of say instead of like it hanging here, it hangs there. But this doesn't actually change the length of the sh the, the penile shaft itself. So when it's flaccid, it might it looks like it's a bit longer because the part that comes out of your body is already out of your body because they cut the ligaments that attach it. Mm -hmm. But when you get erect, it's still the exact same size. So guys are out there paying $10 for enlargement surgery and all they're getting is a better looking wang in the, in the locker room. It's making <laughs> no impact on their love life and they spent 10 grand. It's like, good Lord, what a waste of money. Yeah, if you want to impress guys in the change room of the gym, go get the surgery. Yeah, basically. Uh, <laughs> so it's, it's utterly useless. So with this manual stretching though, you're elongating the attachment and eventually you're along and you're all along the in itself by applying this pressure. So you can, it's, again, it's kind of hard for me to sort of show this in real time uh, on Richard's channel, but think of it like a clock, right? You've got all these different directions. You can kind of pull. And this is also, while I'm on the topic, this is also where you can sort of correct uh, the curvature of our penis. If you say, for example, you pull to the left, which I used to, I used to pull quite significantly to the left. Now I'm far more straight. So like you can say, for example, if I want to, uh, a routine for, for manual stretching might be, I pull up, I hold it up for two minutes. I hold it down for two minutes. I hold it to the right for two minutes. I hold it to the left for two minutes, right? Mm -hmm. That might be like a beginner's routine. If I'm, if I hang, if I swing to the left, then I might pull it to the right for an extra minute to start correcting the uh, the curvature of it. So that's just another thing you guys can focus on. And the same thing goes for up and down. If you go, if you naturally point up, you can make it like go a bit straighter, and that it also just makes it look longer in general because you've corrected the curvature. But that's just more of an aesthetic thing than an actual practical thing. Yeah. There's, there's completely free ways that you can go about like extending the thing. Okay, so um, we got a super chat here. Jason the Dream says, are there any special products like the bath made or any supplements to take to increase size and girth? What's your, what's any, your uh, on that? Fully support the bath mate. Bath mate 100% works. It's a great product. Uh, supplement wise, there is not really anything you can do other than other than uh, basic like protein powders. Because it's the same as, you know, if you're going to the gym, you're, you'll, you might do it causing all the tears. So just make sure, make sure you're supplementing doing these exercises supplement with protein powders so that you have your body has the uh, requisite you know ingredients to rebuild your muscles the muscle there are, there are supplements and other things that i want to talk about when sterling's done that um that will improve your um bedroom life especially as you as you age as a guy so yeah but carry on yeah so that that's that's the 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 penile growth stuff to start with. He had the problem. He also mentioned the problem of premature ejaculation. Now, this is something that a lot of guys hit me up to deal with. And there's a ton of different ways you can solve this problem. By the way, but, every, every guy has this problem when they're younger. Yeah. Well, what's what, unfortunately what's happening now though, is we're seeing a, uh, a rise in younger men who have the opposite problem. We're seeing a rise in younger men who have uh, delayed ejaculation problems mm, because they watch, right? they watch too much internet porn. Okay. Yeah. So that I get young, I get younger guys saying that sort of stuff who are like, mm. older, I get older guys who are more on, on the premature side, and I got younger guys who are like, I can't ejaculate at all. Are you I'm, sure they're not just like you know getting down with women that are extremely unattractive or <laughs> obese? <laughs> Well, maybe the bang, Nazis, maybe the bang the fatties. Who are just not interested in them? Because I mean, you know that, you know, if you're going to get it, get it on with a chick that you're not attracted to, you're going to have a hard time finishing. That, that is absolutely true, though. I can I can verify that is 100 percent fact. Uh, so with the with the premature stuff, right? <clears throat> one of the things you can actually do, and this is something I recommend in my book. This is actually a place where you can use pornography as a tool to help you and i'll explain what i mean you can because what, what a lot of guys do is <clears throat> when they masturbate they masturbate to just ejaculate as quickly as they possibly can and what that does is it trains their body 
to do that. They're basically, if, so if you're masturbating, your masturbation session is like, first video I see, one minute pop. That is reinforcing that behavior between erection and ejaculation and the length of time with your body, right? So when, she get, when, he, when he eventually has a beautiful woman in his room, he sees her, he pops. That's because he's been training that into his body his whole life through the way he masturbates. Now, I don't recommend porn to guys. What I will say, though, is you can do the reverse of this. You can start to train your body to last longer through your masturbation sessions. So you can start to implement a concept called edging, or edging where you get yourself to the point of what we would call the point of no return. So the point of no return is like one sensation on my wang and it's going to pop, right? That's the return. I think every guy is familiar with this idea, especially if they've been in the bedroom and then they've lost control, right? So you get to a certain point and you can't stop yourself from ejaculating. So when you're masturbating, you can get yourself just before that point, stop, calm down, let the sensation go away, breathing deeply, right? And then resume and then get to that point again and then stop and then calm down. And you can start to practice this a few times. You can start to string, you know, a couple of these, uh, get to the point of, no, point of no return and then stop. Get to the point of no return and then stop. Start stringing a few of these together and then see how long I mean, if this, guy, if this guy's having premature ejaculation problems in the bedroom, see how many of these he can string together. See if you can, see if you can do this for 10, 20, 30 minutes just while he's under no pressure at all by himself masturbating. Okay, cool. Now he's starting to train his body to one, like last longer before ejaculating, and two, he's training his body. He's becoming aware of that point of no return. That's another really, really key thing here is... is having the mind body connection between that point of no return. So you can, if for example, a woman is doing something to you, which you're really, really enjoying, but you don't want to ejaculate it. You want to actually keep going. You know, you recognize that and you're like, all right, you stop her and you take control and move her around. You do something else. So you, you take control of the situation so that it's not, you know, you don't lose control and it's, and it's all done. The other thing here is of course, if you're a guy who's, uh, a premature ejaculation. If you orgasm very quickly and easily, if you're a guy who can go like multiple rounds back to back to back, that's actually not that big of a deal. All you do is if you if you pop early the first time, you're just like, all right, give me two minutes and we'll just jump back in again. And in the meantime, I'm I'm going to use this thing right here for like the next two minutes, and then I'm back at you know full mast and we're going again for round two. If that's that's, if that's something this guy can do, then by all means, that should be his strategy because that's a very, very easy thing for him to implement right away. If he can't do that because some guys have longer refractory period of time between orgasms, uh, are quite long for some guys. If that's the case, then what I recommended earlier would be a great first approach, this idea of starting to become aware of his point of no return, creating that mind-body connection, and training his body to last longer. All right. Well, thanks for that. Um, again, if you guys want to get more info on Sterling's programs, he's got, you sent me a copy of your uh, PDF book a few months ago on growing your tool, which is basically the exact steps that you use to grow yours. You said from 5.9 to six and change. Seven and change. Seven and change. Okay. Which is, you know, more than an inch. Um, that's in his gum road. He also has a new course about sexual escalation and dominance. Yeah, um, uh, let's I get like, those resources like, in the top comment and the description of the video as well. Yeah, uh, you were, I was curious what you were going to say. You you were going to recommend some supplements and things. Yes, I have. I, well, you know, I I have the benefit of being forty seven, and I have friends. I have I have some friends that are pretty crazy biohackers. Like, uh, you know, you talk to Ben Greenfield, and he jams uh, needles in his tool. <laughs> he puts stem cells in his. Day. But I was at a. I was at a men's retreat and he was telling us about this uh, acoustic sound wave device. So this is not for the 23 year old guys. I wouldn't, I wouldn't say go and spend time and money on uh, stuff like this, but they have uh, clinics out there that have acoustic shock wave therapy. And 
the thing for guys like as you get older, you're going to accumulate more plaque in your blood vessels. Uh, plaque is a combination of like fats, cholesterol, um, calcium uh, deposits. One of the big problems that, that guys have is if you're taking vitamin D3, which you should be taking, because if you live north or south of the tropics, you're going to be deficient. If you don't believe me, go get your blood labs pulled. You're going to find that you're going to be deficient, especially in the wintertime, even in the summertime, if I'm not supplementing with at least in the summer, I usually take about 8,000 IU of vitamin D3. In the wintertime, it's about 10 to 12,000 IU, which basically means I'm, I'm, I'm spraying this oil in my mouth um, 8 to 12 times. So 8 to 10, or sorry, 8 to 12 shots of the vitamin D3 oil. The problem with vitamin D3 is that it calcifies your arteries. So if you're not taking vitamin K, more, more specifically the MK7 variant, which is more bioavailable, um, you're not going to move the, uh, calcium deposits from your arteries to your bones, which is where you want it. Okay. So as you get older, you will have plaque buildup in your arteries, um, things that you can do to reduce or, um, you know, get rid of that as much as possible. Do, do at least 45 minutes of cardio every day, run, ride a bike. I know in the winter time when I'm, when I'm not outside more, um, my cardiovascular system is not as strong as it, in, you know, as it is in the summer. Like right now, we're in full lockdown mode. So even the ski resorts are closed here. So I can't even go on the slopes. But um, yeah, cardiovascular health is super important. So I'd recommend as far as health stuff for guys, uh, Co CoQ10 is a standard go-to for heart health. But I'd recommend Ubiquinol, which is uh, spelt... U here, I'll just drop it in the chat because I made sure I got the right spelling here. So you want this for heart health if you're an older guy, probably about 30 plus, you want to start using this daily. Um, the other supplements you can use, which which aren't going to make your appendage bigger or, or anything, but what it will do is it increases nitro, nitric oxide in your blood. So L-arginine and L-citrulline um, are both very, very good for that. Um, they're, they're commonly found in gym supplements that you use like pre-workout to like get like the gym pump. But what works in the gym to pump you up will also work in the bedroom to pump you up. So Amino acid, L-arginine, I believe I spelt that correctly. I'm dropping that in the chat. And L-citrulline, going to get the right spelling for that and drop that in the chat. Um, you should be taking those daily anyway, you know, especially if you're older and you want uh, good nitric oxide uh, levels in your blood. You need nitric oxide. You know, you're going to need it for um, muscle health. And of course, if you want uh, good bedroom performance, then that helps a lot too. You can also use things like... Um, Cialis. There's a lot of um, a lot of guys, even in the bodybuilding community now, that will use that as like a pre-workout pump. They do like a low dose, like a five milligram a day. Um, there's lots of peptide companies you can buy from online that will that will ship you. They basically get it from Asia and they crush the pills up into a fluid and they sell it in a peptide bottle and it sells. Uh, what does it say on the bottle? Or they sell it to you. Um, it says something like for research purposes only. <laughs> <laughs> I can tell you a lot of guys have done a lot of research in the bedroom with this stuff. So it works too. Um, yeah, but like a low dose daily, like a five, five milligrams good for you. Uh, my buddy Jay Campbell uh, supports um, low dose uh, daily use of Cialis. It's actually good for your heart. It's good for your cardiovascular health. Um, there's also neuro, neuroprotective benefits to it as well. You can watch some of his videos to get some more clarity on that. Uh, another thing I wanted to uh, point you guys to, which I've pinned in the resources, um, is this little device here. Um, I promoted this last year around September, October. It's called the Phoenix. Um, and it's a home use um, uh, acoustic wave therapy device. So basically the same thing that Ben was telling us about when he would go to the clinic and, you know, he'd get it for free. But I think they charge most people somewhere between two to $5,000 for a certain number of sessions. And you go to a clinic and a pretty nurse, you know, whips out your Johnson and bop, 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 you know, blasts the plaque off your tool. And then you go home mm -hmm. and you come back two to three weeks later and they do it again. They've basically taken that same technology, put it in a handheld device that you buy and you use at home. It's not cheap. I will tell you right now, when they launched this last year, it was, it was off the chart cheap. It was like 400 bucks, but they've had so much demand for it. I think they sell it for over 800 now. They do have payment plans. Um, so pinned in the description and in the top comment, if you want to grab a Phoenix, I'd say if you're an older guy, and you care about bedroom performance, I would I would grab one of these things. I've got one. I usually use it like once every couple of weeks. Um, it it it's a it's a great device. It works really well. You can see basically this here is is all plaque buildup. And what it does is it is it breaks it up with the acoustic sound waves. It's proven to work. It does work. Um, I've actually used this on 
muscle tears that I've had in my um, arm and my IT band. So if you've got, um, you know, like if you're an old guy like me and you tear up some muscles sometimes, you know, the gym, you can actually use on those parts of your body too, because it helps repair. Like it, like it creates these micro tears, kind of like you talk about in, you know, your tool with the gel and all that sort of thing. It creates the same thing, you know, in muscle tissue, which helps, you know, repair it. But I wonder uh, if, this will, sorry, I wonder, I wonder if this would be good for like breaking up fascia on like injuries. They've actually got, um, they're actually working on a, another certification for this, from what I understand, that um, will deal with um, basically blasting away uh, tears in joints. Mm. Uh, I think they have one for uh, cellulite that they're working as well for women too. It's, wow. It's just a slightly different frequency. But this <laughs> one here is the same frequency as what you're paying in the big clinics that are charging two to $4,000. They had a big delay in shipping when they launched this last year because they had a lawsuit they had to answer to because... Apparently it was so effective. There was these large companies that had these big ass machines and clinics that, you know, they were pissed off. So anyway, they, they settled that. It should be available right now. They should have it in stock again. That's all pinned in the top comment. You um, know, uh, speaking of the clinics that do this, there is a, yeah, the clinics where you go and you pay two to $5,000 for this treatment. Yeah. There's a clinic in Los and one of the nurses is actually a porn star, Phoenix Marie. She does this to clients. With the machine, with that machine, no joke. Is there a happy ending that's involved in that? When they uh, look, <laughs> we're not going to talk about that. Are you, are you sure it's a clinic? I mean, this is Vegas. I mean, they do have brothels there too, right? Look, all right. There's a there's a doctor at the door somewhere. I don't. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Um, this guy's got his money's worth and more on this request. I think we've covered yeah, a ton. I mean, I, I'm I'm happy to. Well, I kind of wanted to go into. Um, I was gonna. What I was gonna do actually actually do is sort of show a couple of examples of stuff from uh, some free demo clips from my new video course. I yeah, think it'll actually help. You put it up. They're totally YouTube friendly. Yeah, yeah. These, right, yeah, these, these, the screen, these guys a little bit more. Because yeah, this is kind of like the the reason the whole reason I I put together this new video course was actually a, uh, a question. that that Rollo Tomasi uh, said to me during our, in one of our DMs, he said, you know, it would be really nice. Like when guys hear the problem that guys make when they hear they need to be more dominant in the bedroom, right? They need to be more alpha. If guys are sort of kind of obsessed with this idea of being the alpha fox and not being the beta box, right? Mm -hmm. So when guys hear this, they're like, oh, I need to be more dominant in the bedroom. So they try to go from zero hundred straight away. They try to go from this, this, lame like vanilla boring guy in the bedroom to then like oh i don't know what to do now i guess i'll just smack a girl in the face and and horribly and, you know they get a me too allegation or the, the girl runs away and crying or something right yeah so they don't understand the nuance and the context of like how to get there mm -hmm. how to get to the point where they could do something you know in the realm of them consensually and pleasurably for a woman right so Rollo said to me, it'd be nice to talk guys how to go from, say, 0 to 10, and then from 10 to 20, and then 20 to 30, et cetera. And so I thought, well, I can do that. And we did. That was part, basically this, this my Rule Zero presentation at our Rule Zero Live conference this year was the first kind of inception of this idea. For those of you who, who watched that, you would have seen me doing some lovely demonstrations on my friend Samantha Mack. And the concept... Yeah, you guys that if you weren't in the live event, by the way. Yeah. The concept is I've broken down how to go, how to take a guy from very, very tame vanilla stuff and baby step him along the scale to the point where he is doing far more extreme uh, sexual acts. I don't even know if I should say some of them on your channel, but uh, stuff which would, you, would get you into the realm of BDSM. Let's just say that much, right? Mm -hmm. So... What this what this guy his question was about was oh I'm never going to be he thinks he's never going to be seen as a fox because of just just because of his the size of his wang right and that's not the case in in this video course like one of the things I try to drill home is if you're the first guy if you can if, if you can give a if you can give a woman some kind of sexual experience she's never had before. If you can give her a type of orgasm she's never had before, if you can show her how to submit in a way that she's never submitted before, it sh immediately shoots you up the ladder mm -hmm. to being like one of the top 
lays in her entire life. You, If you can give her something she's never had before, you are immediately by default the best sex she's ever had. That's unavoidable. That's just how it works. And it, And you don't even have to be like Chad. You don't have to be great looking. You don't have to be like jacked, like wealthy, high status. And I know this because I used to do this when I was in my, my mid to like, to like mid twenties, really. I used to be the guy who would, who would ha- have sugar mamas who were like one or two years older than me, who were like trust fund girls whose daddy was rich and they had like a Cadillac and they would drive around. They'd come pick me up, take me to dinners and then I'd service them and they'd cheat on their fiance with me. Mm. I'm proud of this, but that's how I know this stuff. It's because when you've got these skills under your belt, like I was saying before, it, retaining girls is really easy because they just come back for more because they haven't had this experience and they can't get this experience anywhere else. Here's, listen, a, here's cool. a question for you that I'm, that I'm sure guys are pondering on. It's like, well, Sterling, can't I just watch you on Pornhub and do what you do? Like, isn't that what gets girls off? Well, uh, <laughs> he is the, it, that's the problem, right? So, Pornography is like a, a, a fantasy. Pornography is of display art. And there's a lot of stuff that we look at. It's not all make-believe. There's a lot of real, genuine pleasure going on on a, on a porn set, right? But there's the way we're doing certain things is hard for a guy to understand just when he's got his wang in his hand and he's watching something on Pornhub. And not every girl is at is receptive to the things that you would see on a porno immediately. Especially if you aren't cross as being a dominant alpha guy in the bedroom. If you're coming across as incongruent if you're coming across as, say, a beta box, coming across as you know a guy who isn't very, isn't leading, isn't in control, isn't very dominant, and then you try to do those things, it's extremely incongruent. Mm-hmm. There's nothing more unattractive to a woman than a guy being incongruent like that. Fake. Yeah. But would you like Would you like me to show you some demos that I've totally yeah. YouTube? Yeah. Yeah. Throw it up on the screen if it's YouTube friendly. We'll you know we'll do that before we wrap up. <clears throat> do you have it queued up? Yeah, I'm just going to open this. I'm just going to screen share because this is the uh, easiest way for me to do this. Yeah. And while you're doing that, again, guys, if you want to get any of Sterling's stuff, I've I've dropped into the live chat. It's also in the um, top pin comment and description. I, I know he's launching this uh, escalation course in the bedroom. Yeah. Kind of yeah. That you yeah, this one. So I'm just going to sh- put this on my wall and then you can maybe re- you can remove me if you want and then uh, just have this one up. We'll just go full screen. There you go. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so this is this gives, this shows you sort of the way I've, I'm the whole course is structured. So I have I have like basically as you go through the course, it's like here's a demonstration of a technique, and then I break it down after I, I show it. So this is me breaking down, uh, pushing a girl up up against a wall and making out with her. So this is this is this is like the very very low end of the spectrum. So there's a couple of things you'll notice here. I'll pause it. So first things first, I'm leading her through the door an important thing to take note of i'm hold, i'm holding her by the hand and leading her through the door here uh, second thing you'll notice as i'm about to throw her up against the wall here or against the door here rather see where my hand went my hand went behind her head there's a reason for that that is so i can push her against the door or the wall or whatever i'm pushing her against with force without smacking her head and uh, and hurting her so I'm able to, to because I'm my hand's taking the brunt of the pain there, right? Or brunt of the impact, rather. So I can push up against the wall in a rel- relatively forceful manner, dominant manner, without actually causing any pain, uh, without adding any sort of awkwardness to the interaction as well. Because you bring a girl home from a date and you crack her head against the door, she's going to be like, ow, and then it's going to ruin the mood, right? So it's a very, very subtle but very important detail there. Then a quick make out, and then an example of coquetting here. I break it off and I walk away, and then she follows. So that's a that's a perfect example of coquetting right there. 
that's kind of that's, an, that's one example of uh, how the uh, all the different things in my video course are broken down. So that's like that's the very very low low like yeah. zero to five kind of scale. That was of, like less than thirty seconds there. I mean, like how like how long is the video footage in the course that you have? It's five and a half plus hours of content. All right, there you go. You guys can go and binge watch all that if you want to. You know, if you want to become the Sterling Cooper of the bedroom. Yeah, there's like five and a half plus hours of, of, of video breakdowns like that. About I cover about eighty different sexual techniques. I cover a ton of stuff uh, in this course. Like I, I and I also go through like uh, what I call progressions. So I say, say for example, you have an end goal in mind. Like the end goal for a lot of guys, uh, is, to use one example, might be uh, butt stuff, right? And so I show guys, okay, well here is how if you if you have a girl who hasn't done it yet or isn't you know, totally on board with it yet. Here's how you can baby step her through what I would call a sexual compliance ladder to the point where she is receptive and keen to that idea. And you, you do that over several sex sessions. Mm. I mean, this isn't like you do this like the first date, you know, this is something you can first date you do this and then second, third, fourth, fifth. Okay. And then, you know, a month down the line, bang, we're at the point where where you where you actually wanted to to get to. So this is not only sort of how to. There's multiple things here. It's not only how to like be better in the bedroom, keep girls retained, but it's also for you to do the things that you've always wanted to do without you know coming across as needy and desperate and and you know being like, oh, can you can I please put it in your your behind? I'd I'd really like to do that, my lady. <laughs> no, like <laughs> this is how you you execute it smoothly naturally and and with her compliance along the way yeah all right so i guess with that being said i mean we've we've carved out close to an hour worth of gold here for you guys um you know sterling stuff there is in the uh, chat here let me just drop it one more time keep it at yeah. the top well, I, will, I will say right now, uh this this brand new vehicle <laughs> is currently on pre-order until the th it releases on the third of january so it's 50 percent off right now until <laughs> of January. The full price is seven ninety nine. So right now it's on sale for three ninety eight. There you go. Third of January that stops and the price doubles. So if you want All to right. get hands, get it then. Yeah, if you want to get five hours of how to how to bang like Sterling, um, <laughs> you know how to take girls to Pound Town. I always like to rename stuff. I you know I just like to have a little bit of fun with it. But um, grab that. And he's also got a really good um, Gumroad guide, uh, like a PDF. Um, that breaks down exactly how to grow your tool the way that he did himself. Um, yeah, so and check that out. I hope this helps our sponsored request. Um, I will say, like, your expectations, though, to be with a Victoria's Secret model, um, you need to be the kind of guy that a Victoria's Secret model wants to be with, right? So, you know, you've got some work to do on yourself to level up. Um, there's some stuff you can do to increase the size of your tool, to... Uh, not have issues in the bedroom with premature ejaculation, you know, perform better, all that stuff. There's there's loads there that we've given away from free. There's some good supplements and some other resources for older guys as well if you want to get a... Oh, a I, I, had a mm -hmm. I was going to say, what was the... You mentioned the supplement Ubiquinol. What exactly does that do? It's it's um, it's a better version of coenzyme Q10. It's, mm -hmm. it's just a, a supplement that's good for heart health. And at the end of the day, I mean, if you want to perform well, if you want to have, you know, a strong erection and good cardiovascular health, you definitely want to have um, that in your system on a daily basis. And you want vitamin D because that's like a hormone. But at the same time, when you start pounding back lots of vitamin D, you're going to need to take vitamin K or uh, vitamin K MK7 variant, which is more bioavailable, which will get the um, uh, calcium out of your arteries and move it into your bones, right? Um, you know, there's a whole bunch of stuff that you can do. I mean, if you're serious about leveling up and being better in all, all areas of your life, I mean, I'm not a biohacker, but fortunately, you know, I've spent enough time paying attention to guys that are, that are good at that. I've got friends that are, you know, deeply immersed in it to the point where they inject stuff into their appendage. <laughs> uh, so yeah, take it for what it's worth. There's lots of gold in this. Enjoy it. Uh, check out Sterling's course, and we'll see you guys uh, real, real soon. I got it before the train wreck tomorrow night. I have um, a guy that I that I stumbled across on one of Myron's casts. That's a uh, lawyer from Florida, and he's got a really, really good uh, broadcast that he does on marriage and divorce. So that'll be tomorrow night at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard. So you can check that out. We'll probably li live on that one for 60 to 90 minutes. It should be fun. Thanks, Sterling.
Thank you for having me. Enjoy the rest of your Portuguese adventure, brother. I certainly will.